Blog Talk Radio. All right, what's up, y'all? Y'all now on Robbie Deloney. And tonight, for the next 30 minutes, we go on the air with Buckshot of the Underground Avengers. And uh, we're going to be speaking with him. And if you have any questions for him, feel free to either ask them in the chat box on the page or you can call in as well. The number is right there on the side. You can ask him any question you want. So for the next 30 minutes, we're going to be on the air with Buckshot and uh, get this interview going. So thanks for tuning in. Hello. Yeah, you're on the air. Yes, what's up, man? This is Buckshot. Uh, Not much, you know, just hanging out there, you know. What's happening? Uh, Nothing much, just, you know, hanging in there. I've been waiting for this interview all day. Yeah, that's what's up. Right, so uh, tell us, um, do you have anything more going on with the Underground Avengers? Uh, Right now... Uh, Boondocks, of course, everybody knows he's out on tour, and uh, we're waiting for him to to get a break. Right now, what's uh, what we're trying to get accomplished is uh, we're going to shoot a video for one of the songs, possibly two off the EP. But uh, the timing of the of the EP hitting and Boondocks' tour didn't coincide well with each other, so we're just kind of uh, just pushing the project right now and waiting for him to get a break and uh, in his schedule and so he can come down here and uh, shoot one or two videos for it and keep pushing it like that, man. Right, right. And um, do you plan on doing any tours um, coming up or are you just laying off till Boondocks gets time off so you can work on the videos? Uh, right now we've got two different promoters that's been getting, uh, trying to put together an actual Underground Avengers tour. And of course, uh, it's just a little bit more, a little bit more difficult than usual just because, you know, class lives in Dallas and I'm up here in Louisville. And of course, Boondocks is, uh, he's out of Georgia, but I think right now he's kind of, uh, staying around the Wisconsin area. So, uh, just kind of trying to get everybody on the same page. And uh, I think right now with what's on our plate, we've got like 30 to 40, 30 to 40 potential cities that uh, we're going to have lined up. It, it won't be, from what I'm hearing, it won't be, the tour won't be till probably the first quarter, early next year, 2013. But there's also something going on. We might have four to six shows in the Texas State, uh, different cities. I'm not going to name them right now until I know, uh, until I have, you know, all the information in front of me and know what's going on. But just kind of some one-off shows. I know there's four to six, uh, four to six potential shows in Texas, and then we've got another promoter that's wanting to do three or four one-offs. So we're just trying to get everybody, as far as the artists, on the same page and uh, see what we come up with. Right. So that tour that you planned for the beginning of 2013, is that going to be to promote the EP or a future album with you guys, or what's the whole deal with that? Yeah. Well, right now, I mean, of course, the Underground Avengers uh, became a whole lot bigger than I think all of us anticipated, and uh, it definitely is one of my focuses. But, of course, my main focus right now is getting my solo album, Weirdo, finished. And uh, I've been working on that album for a few years, actually. And uh, it's just about done. I'm just waiting on a few features. And um, getting the rest of the album, it's, it's I'd say, 75% mixed down. And uh, the engineer that I'm working with, Great engineer. I've been working with this guy for eight, nine years, and uh, he just had a bad accident and had to get rotator cuff surgery done on his shoulder, and uh, he's he's been out 
for re, uh, rehabilitation, and uh, he's not been able to do any kind of engineering or mixing. As the doctor said, he doesn't want to fool him with the arm at all. So he kind of kind of has me on pause. So you know, in the hiatus of me slowing down on weirdo, you know, I've been shifting all my <clears throat> shifting all my attention on the Underground Avengers and uh, what we got going on there. Right. So speaking of the Weird Al's album, is that going to be another one like the Problem album where it's going to be like full of, you know, collabs or are you going to actually have some tracks where it's just you or what do you got planned for that? So th- there's definitely quite, of a, quite a few collabs on it. I basically have the album. It's uh, 19 tracks and I have 10 songs that... Uh, it's just completely me besides hooks. On the ten songs that are all just me doing the verses, several of the songs I've got features doing the hooks, but then I also have nine tracks that have other artists that I uh, have worked with before and some newer artists that this is my first time working with them, but I've got a lot of lot of nice, huge underground features that a lot of people uh, know of and, you know, a lot of people's favorite rappers are going to be on this album, and uh, it's it's going to be a really big album. Okay. So with the Underground Avengers EP, I noticed on the very last track you had, I don't know, maybe eight or nine collabs. How did that all come about? Like, did you guys all gather up, or did they, you know, just send their verses in, or how did you guys all come about with that? Well, that song started out, uh, it's actually a, a ripoff of a past song that I had on my third album. I had a song called Tools of Destruction, and uh, it was the last last track on the album, and it was basically the same concept. It was, I think, 14, 15 artists, eight-bar verses, no hook, just straight, you know, straight bars from beginning to end. And since that album, I've just had fans throughout the year say how much they love that song and they would love to see me come back with a remix to it or, you know, another version of it. And with uh, doing the Underground Avengers, I was like, you know, there's a lot of artists that I've been meeting and, and wanting to work with in the Wicked Underground. And I was just thought, you know, the time was right to do a finale track and uh, reach my hand out to a lot of these artists that I work with and talk to and, you know, making another uh, Tools of Destruction type song and it, it came out definitely a winner. The only artist that recorded here for that song in the studio was, of course, Boondocks Class and myself and all the other artists they did all their verses in separate studios and sent us the vocals, and we actually mixed it all down here at our studio. Nice. So with the Underground Avengers, how did that all actually come about? Or did you guys just meet up for some sort of meeting, or did someone contact another and just decide to get a project going, or how did that all come about? Well, the the whole thing actually... uh, you know, before the Underground Avengers was ever a concept or ever announced, Boondocks and I had been talking for a while about wanting to do something together. And uh, we'd just been talking about doing, you know, doing a song here or there. Just, we just kind of uh, just talking about a whole lot of ideas and whatnot. And in the same time frame, Class and I had just cut a song together and, uh, Class and I had started to work together, and Class hit me up, and, you know, he said he had this great idea of him and I, him and I potentially doing a, a project or an EP and release it at the gathering. And, you know, I told him that Boondocks and I had been talking about, you know, doing something, and uh, so, I, you know, I told Class, I'd hit him back, reached out, told Boondocks, you know, I've Class called me and wants to do a project, him and I. I said, you and, you and I have been talking about doing something. I asked him what he felt about the three of us collabing and, and doing a project together, and Dirty was all the way with it. 
and uh, we just made, you know, we made it happen. I think that whole project start to finish, from the time we started till the day we sent the master out, I think we got the whole entire thing done, recorded, mixed, concepts, tracks, everything in 10 weeks. So do you guys plan on using the Underground Avengers, or do you guys plan on going off and doing your own thing, or what's going on with that? Like, is this a small project, or is this, you know, top, top of the line? Well, I mean, I know right now, you know, Dirty's got a, uh, Boondocks has got a, uh, got an EP he's going to be dropping, I think, November, December. And, of course, class, he never stays still. I've got my own solo stuff going on. But uh, as much success as we've seen with this, as, as much as we've seen the fans excited, they love the music, uh, you know, we actually just were almost sold out of the first run. And, uh, you know, just with the, with the whole success of it and the hype, we've talked about uh, possibly, you know, coming back with an actual album or maybe another EP, but uh, it's definitely not ruled out. I would say chances are we'll probably see another Underground Avengers project, not anytime soon because, of course, you know, right now we're looking at getting a video or two done for this project and, of course, a uh, possible tour so uh, I don't know. Keep your fingers crossed. Maybe come time to gathering next year. You never know what can happen. Right. So with the two videos, do you think those will be released by the end of this year, or is that probably going to come around with next year's tour? If I could get Boondocks' ass down here, we could have both videos out before the end of this month. <laughs> so, uh it's just, you know, Boondocks is on tour, and he's all over the country, and it's hard uh, hard to uh, to get us all together in the same city. Of course, uh, the, I'd say the most hyped about song off the project, which first video we want to shoot for it is for King Kong. And, of course, we've already talked to Jelly Roll. Jelly Roll's totally with it. He's in Nashville. He's a two-hour and 45-minute drive from me, so it's nothing for him. And uh, even Boondocks, everybody's with the video. It's just getting everybody together. But, yeah, I would say we would we will definitely see at least one video before the end of the year. And if, if it was up to me, I'd say we would probably uh, release the second video kicking off the tour. But until uh, we can get everybody in the same city and discuss what we're going to do, it's still a little bit too early, though you know, figure it out right now. Right. So with this before, do you believe it's going to be more like down in your local area or are you going to actually tour the world and, you know, expand a little? Oh, no, it, it's definitely going to be uh, touring the country. I mean, I know there's a lot of cities in Florida, California, Texas, uh, Maryland, there's a lot of Michigan, there's a lot of places that have already expressed uh, interest and said that they, they want the Underground Avengers to, to do a show at their venue. So, you know, the, the want to have us out there, the want is there. It's just getting all of us on the same page. But, you know, the the venues want us. We're, we're getting all kind of calls from promoters and emails and We've got a we've got one main promoter that's kind of working on this right now, and uh, you know, hopefully uh, we'll have some more information on it soon. All right, cool. So, what more is there you can tell us about your Weirdo album? Do you have a release date set for it, or are you holding out? Well, the something? the original release date for it was uh, supposed to be October thirtieth which probably off that now because my engineer was injured and I'm kind of at his mercy on getting everything finished. But uh, so as far as the date, I don't really want to throw a date back on it un until I, you know, my engineer will goes through rehab and, and figures, you know, figures out if his arm's going to be okay. But uh, I mean, in the meantime, I've actually added a few more songs on Weirdo that originally was not going to be on it. 
and uh, there's actually a couple more features that uh, very, very big surprises that I'm not even really at liberty to talk about. But uh, if it goes down like I think it's going to go down and how it's supposed to, it'll definitely be one of the biggest features on the project and by far one of the biggest features in the Wicked Underground totally. So uh, we'll, we'll just see how that plays out. But uh, it's, uh, it's going to be big. I mean, there's, there's already some really big features that, you know, that's on it. The, all the features that, that's been out there on the inside of the Avengers artwork and that's been all over Twitter, all those features are accurate. We haven't, uh, we haven't been announcing any of the new features on it. But outside of who's on the artwork, Ritz, who uh, congratulations, homie, if you hear this for signing with Strange, Ritz is, uh, has dropped something on Weirdo that's just fucking ridiculous. Twisted Insane, he did something on the project. Uh, Dirtball is actually going to be part of Weirdo now. And uh, two more features that are on the tip of my tongue, but I'm just going to bite my tongue right now because they're they're pretty huge features, and I don't want to jinx myself until I actually get the until I actually get the verses sent in to me. But uh, I've, I've got some. Uh, got some ammunition ready to go with it and when it comes through it, it's going to be huge so do you believe this album is going to be one of your best yet like compared to your other ones that you've put out I mean of course with all the projects that I've done in the past uh, you know there's there's always a place in my heart for my first second third all my past albums and you know you've got the fans out there that the first album, no matter what you put out, is always going to be the best because that project came out in a time and a place when, you know, they're listening to it. It brings back old memories and, and good times of their, of their past. So, of course, you know, I, I've got a place in my heart for all my albums. But uh, in my opinion, Weirdo is definitely going to be the pinnacle of my career. I think uh, the way I'm rapping right now, it's definitely the best delivery and punchlines, just total all around rapping. It's it's the best that Buckshot has had to, to offer, and the production is top notch. The whole entire project was produced by Michael Seven Summers, who produces the majority of Tech Nine's music, and uh, he actually produced every single track on Weirdo, and it's just just nothing but powerful tracks uh it's, man it's it's some of the hottest stuff i've heard him turn out now i i noticed you said that you know you always have a spot in your heart with every project that you've done and put out but what would you say you're most impressed with album wise my my most uh my most impressive album to date is my newest project called the problem I released that uh that album came out last year February 2011. I actually re- finished the project before I went to prison. I went to federal prison from uh 2009 to 2011 and uh I actually had that project done before I went to prison and uh we were going to release it while I was in there, but we just figured that while I was stuck in there, we couldn't promote the album how we wanted to. So we waited till I got out and we released it like five weeks after I got out of prison. But yeah, problem. That's to me is definitely, uh, definitely my, my best work to date. All right. So how long would you say you've, been you know in the underground for and how long have you you know been around how did you actually come about with getting into rapping and like your build up and whatnot i've been doing this since 1997 i dropped my first album welcome to the ville in july of 97 i didn't have any big features on it it was just really bigger local people i'm from louisville kentucky and 
were right across the bridge from Southern Indiana, so I had a lot of uh, a lot of bigger name features from the artists just local. And then in uh, 2000, I dropped my second album, One More for the Haters, sold 15,000 copies. Uh, my first album sold 7,000, so I, I more than doubled it, sold 15,000. I turned around, I got picked up by Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers put the album out. It sold another 15,000 copies, and then I got dropped because the sub-label WIA, uh, Warner Electric Atlantic, they folded, and the company that was distributing me, Power Records, went under. So I was back to being independent again. Two years later, 2002, I dropped They Still Don't Love Me, which was uh, my biggest selling album to date. I've sold, I believe on SoundScan, I think we're at 90,000 copies. I've sold uh, over 100,000 copies of that album. We had Haystack on it, Brother Lynch Hung, Gangsta Black, X-Rated, P-Folks, Low Key, uh, First Degree, the DE. We had some real big uh, underground artists from the West Coast. And uh, then, of course, after that album came out, that's when uh, computers kind of blew up. And computers were every household in America and free downloading came into play. So from... From that point, that's basically when albums started selling real big, unless, of course, you're a major artist on a industry label. And uh, I've put out three albums since then. I've, d I've done over independently, beside the 15,000 that Warner Brothers put out, I've, I've pushed over 150,000 albums in my career. So you've come a long way then. Yeah. I mean, for being, you know, this uh, this underground white rapper from Kentucky did 150,000 units and, you know, still going strong. Yeah, I, I feel very blessed to be in the position that I'm in and feel even more blessed that, you know, right now my downloads are at an all-time high. We're just selling merch, albums, T-shirts like crazy on the Internet. And, uh, you know, I, I really feel like my buzz is, is at a, you know, especially on an Internet scale, my buzz is at an all-time high. And, you know, my weirdo album, I've got Tech Nines on it, Chris Calico's on it, Jelly Rose on it, uh, Grave Plot, uh, Kid Crusher, you know, uh, Bubba Sparks is on it. I've just got a lot of really huge underground features that uh you know that it's help has helped make this album gonna be the monster that it's gonna be and uh I just feel like when, when Weirdo drops, man, it's just gonna start all over again as far as you know, there's a lot of people that had no idea how long I've been rapping. I've got people that hit me up and they just assume I'm some new rapper and you know, hey, I heard the Underground Avengers, you know, you're awesome. Is is that your first project? So there's a lot of people that stumbling onto Buckshot and they just assume I'm some new rapper and they don't realize that I've been doing this for 14, 15 years. Well, that, that's, uh, that's impressive. I know most people that only sell maybe um, 7,000 copies or whatever it was you said usually end up giving up after that. So it's actually, you know, big that you've actually kept going with it and didn't give up like most people would have. That's great. Yeah, I mean, I, I've definitely, I mean, you know, with, with anything, anybody's career, I've had ups and downs, and I've had times where I was just sick of it and done with it, and I just told myself that, hey, you know, I'm done with this shit. I'm not going to rap anymore. It's too big of a headache, and, you know, it, the shit's in my blood. I've tried to quit before, and it won't let me. I'm just, like, infected with this shit. So, fuck it. I'm going to ride it out. And, you know, there's some people that this life is meant for them, and there's just some people that it's not meant for them. And those are the people that you see put out an album, and you never hear from them again. And, uh, you know, it, I keep pushing on, and it's working. I still have... You know, big love for the music. I'm a super huge underground supporter. 
I've got a CD collection that's 2,000 plus CDs, not a scratch on them. I've got my CD co- uh, collections impeccable. I've, I don't think I've seen one CD collection bigger than mine. And uh, I just really love hip hop. I really love underground music. And uh, that's where my heart's at. And, you know, I'm still a fan of this. So that's why that's why I think I'm I'm still blessed and being been so successful with it because being a fan, the love is showing through my music and through my desire to make make good music and make good moves and you know, it, it it's rewarding me with success. So I've got a lot of lot of fans that love me and I love them back and you know, if it wasn't for the fans to appreciate the music, you know, I I would just be just some other rapper in the middle of, you know, the middle middle of the world doing this, but I've got such the great, the best fans in the world that support me, and, you know, that's what it's all about. Great. So, um, you said that you've been a big supporter of the underground for a while now. Would you say, or who would you say would probably be your biggest, you know, influence into doing what you do now to keep you going like is there any specific underground rappers that pushed you to keep doing what you do or were there artists bigger than the underground that you know gave you that influence or i mean when i when i first started of course my biggest inspiration you know back then was ice cube and you know when ice cube at back then that's when he was with nwa and you know they were off gangster shit and talking about fuck the police i mean Obviously, Ice Cube's moved on to doing, you know, Hollywood movies and whatnot. He's he's had an awesome and successful career. But I would say, you know, over the last six years, I mean, you know, to really watch what Tech Nine and Strange Music has done for the underground is very, very inspiring to watch what you know, Violent J and Shaggy and Psychopathic Records to watch what they've done to the underground, very, very inspiring. And, uh, you know, but there's a lot of people out there that don't like Tech 9 that don't like ICP, but whether you don't like them or not, you can't fucking ignore what Strange and Psychopathic has done for the underground music scene and, you know, on top of 30 other artists, I mean, they're keeping they're keeping hip-hop alive on the underground. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, definitely, man, uh, you know, Tech and Strange and, uh, you know, ICP and Psychopathic, I mean, they're, they're keeping the Wicked Underground alive and, and it's booming. Oh, so, uh, you know, we're almost out of air here, out of air time. Um, is there anything else you'd like to, you know, let us know and that you haven't noted or is there any shout outs you'd like to make or anything? Yeah, I mean, definitely want to uh I wanna shout out my record label, Mob Style Music. This has been the the same label I've been with for fourteen years. Uh Every one of the guys on my label, man, I love them like brothers. The the executives that own the label are me, Casey Hustle, and Massimo Carlucci. You know, we run the whole entire label. And uh, the artists on the label, beside myself, we've got Big Dre. We've got Hostile, Mixed Magic, and uh, T Razor, and you know I want to shout those guys out, man. If y'all are listening, or you get to hear this, man, I love you guys like brothers. Glad we're doing this. The best is yet to come. And uh, for those who have not heard my album, The Problem, which is my newest album, you can get on my website, BobStyleMusic.com. You can order The Problem, and you get a free copy of The Underground Avengers with it. We're down to. 20 something copies now. We just put a reorder in yesterday. So hopefully hopefully from the time we run out until the shipment comes, hopefully, you know, people's not waiting waiting around for them, but we still offer the Underground Avengers project is free with any order from the website 
Or if you don't want to order th- anything from the website, you can order just the Underground Avengers. Everything on our website's free shipping. So definitely, you know, if you haven't heard the Underground Avengers, check it out. We've got three three songs, free downloads. You can go on my Twitter at Buck Chisel and or uh, go to at UG Avengers, which is the Underground Avengers Twitter page, and you can find uh, three different downloads that are free downloads. And of course, I also want to shout out my Underground Avenger brothers, Boondock and Class, for help helping hold down the underground with me with this project. And uh, I think the best is yet to come from all of us. Yeah, that's just a lot of love there. But, um, all right, well, I'm going to get you off the line here and, you know, do my closeout. So, uh, you know, it was great to get you on, and maybe we can do another one in the future. Yeah, man, I'm with it. Just hit me up, man. I'm I'm all about uh, interacting with supporters and fans and, and people who love this hip-hop underground shit like I do. All right, that's what's up. You know, I'll keep in contact with you, and we'll get something in for the future. All right, weirdos. Yeah, have a good night. All right, you too. All right, man. Peace. All right, later. All right, well, that was Buckshot of the Underground Avengers. He gave you some letdowns of a possible tour in the beginning of 2013, and the new album almost getting ready to get put out called Weirdos. And he also gave a letdown that he has a newer album out that came out recently last last February called The Problem. Get that on Amazon, iTunes, MobStyleMusic.com. Any place that sells records and albums. Um, and he gave more of some info, you know, if you tuned in and you don't know anybody who knows of Buckshot or the Underground Avengers, give them this, uh, you know, interview, play it for them. Or, you know, you got the Underground Avengers EP, you know, play that for them. You can get the EP off momstylemusic.com off of every order you make. Or if you don't want anything else but the EP, you can go cap it there separately. And, uh, you know, that's it. You know, thanks for tuning in. And tomorrow night we'll be on the air with Nappy J of Big Nappy Productions, and he's going to be giving a letdown of Juggle Nation 3, his latest project. So thanks for tuning in, and we'll hear from you guys tomorrow. All right, later.